Good day everyone, I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to make a simple level editor for Click Team Fusion 2.5. Uh, this one is going to be for a platform game, so if you don't know how to make a platformer, I have a tutorial series on that, and you should go ahead and watch that now. Uh, but if you do know how to make a platformer, then you are in the right place. So right now all I have is the platform movement object, I have a player object, and two backdrops that he can collide with. This is just so he doesn't fall when we start. Alright, so <clears throat> first thing we want to do is insert an object. So throw in an active object. Uh, we're going to need to give this a variable. We're going to call it tile. Okay, so now we need to give this active object, actually we're going to name it. We're going to call it tile placer, tile underscore placer. So this is going to actually be where we store the tiles um, and how we place the tiles. So uh, we need to go ahead and edit the various uh, animations of this. So we're just going to edit the stopped animation. We're going to delete the first one. And I'm just going to make this a outline. Um, and the hotspot needs to be in the top left, which it is currently at. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I'm just going to make some various colored blocks. So this is where you would be drawing your different tiles. You know, like if you wanted to have a cool Mario block or something you would make it one of these animations and that would be your block. And you can have as many as you want. We're gonna have block uh, frame one, which is actually in Fusion considered to be frame zero. That's gonna be our null frame and we are going to make sure that whenever that frame is placed it actually just deletes whatever has been placed. Okay. So let's modify this object a bit. Um, let's make sure that it stays active if it leaves the frame. Okay, um, we want to not destroy the object if it's too far from the frame, and we also want to make sure that it does not become inactive. So this here is where I have the platformer stuff. You don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to insert a comment, uh, and this is going to be tile placing. So the first thing we want to do is have the tile placer follow the mouse on a grid. So we're going to make this an always event. We are always going to set the position, the X coordinate of this object to X mouse divided by 32 times 32. Now 32 is the size of the tile. So whatever the size of your tile is, replace 32 with that. We're going to do the same thing for the Y position. So set the Y coordinate to Y mouse divided by 32 times 32. Now let's take a look at it. As you see now, it follows on a grid. So this is perfect for uh, what we need to do for placing the tiles. Now we're going to um, we're going to allow us to change the current tile. So we will do this on mouse wheel up and down, but you can use any key you want. So when mouse wheel is up, and when mouse wheel is moved down, when that happens, we are going to change the value of tile. So for up, we're going to add one to it. For down, we're going to subtract. We also want to make sure that it doesn't go below zero, so we're going to find out if that happens. If multiple value of tile is lower than zero, then we're going to set it to zero. We just want to clamp it. Okay, so we want to be able to place the tile um, whenever we hold down the mouse button. So we will say, repeat while mouse key is pressed, and that's the left mouse button. Also, we want to uh, add a stipulation to this, though. We only want this to happen if the alterable value of tile uh, is different than zero. All right, so on this always event up here, we are always going to set the animation frame of the tile editor, or the tile placer, rather, to its uh, alterable value of tile, so that whenever we change it, it always matches up. So change. Uh, animation frame and we're going to change it to the value of tile. All right, let's test this and see if it works. Okay, so we can now move through the tiles. All right, <clears throat> so uh, back here on line 14. So whenever the tile is not zero, so not null, we're going to need to create it. So go to the active object and we are going to select under animation, paste image into background. We want to paste it as an obstacle, all right? And now we need to copy this 
delete the paste image, we don't want to do that. Um, and this is, we want to modify this so that if it equals zero. And what we're going to do is then go to the storyboard controls and we want to go to something called backdrops, delete created backdrops at, it's going to be layer one. And the X coordinate is going to be the X position of our placer object. And the Y coordinate is going to be the Y coordinate of our placer object. Um, we'll just use bounding box detection instead of find detection. All right, let's see if it worked. So I'm holding the mouse button down, nothing is being placed. But now we can place blue down. And I can put green anywhere. And here's red. And here's some blocks. And let's go back down to the first one and it deletes stuff. So right there off the bat, we already have a uh, working tile editor. So let's, let's make a little level real quick. Now, as you see, um, because these are obstacles, our player does interact with them. All right, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make a new comment. We're gonna say save and load. We're gonna add some button presses here. We're gonna have the keyboard upon pressing a key. We'll have uh, number one, copy this, and we're gonna have something happen when we press number two. All right, we need to modify some stuff though. We need to add an object. <clears throat> we're gonna add in the array object. Uh, click on the array object, we need to change some stuff. We're gonna use a numeric array. We want this to be base zero, not base one, so uncheck base one index. And the dimensions, we want it a little bigger. So we want 20 by 20. This will allow us to have uh, 20 tiles by 20 tiles, which for such a small level, um, this is fine. But obviously you want to calculate and put in the X and Y dimensions based on the size of your level. Keep in mind though that if even if you have null space in an array, it's gonna take up file size. So if you have like an array that's, you know, 1000 by 1000, it's gonna be fairly large, a couple megabytes, maybe like three megabytes or so. All right, so we need to uh, go ahead and modify our code real quick. So whenever we paste the tiles in, and when we delete them, we need to do some stuff in the array. So we are going to change the current position. We're gonna set the X position of the array to the X position of our tile editor, our tile placer, divided by the size of the tile. Uh, so that's 32. And then we wanna do the same thing for Y, set the Y dimension to the Y position of this object and divide it by 32. All right, so now we want to uh, write something into that spot in the array. So we are going to write value to the current position because we've already updated that position. And that is going to be the value of tile. So let's go ahead and drag this down here. We want that to happen down here as well. Yep, all right, that looks good. Um, okay, so now we want saving and loading. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it so that one, when we press it, will generate the level, and two is just going to clear the level. So when we press two, we want to go down to the storyboard object and go to uh, backdrops, and we're just gonna delete all created backdrops in layer one. And when we do one, we're gonna start the generation loop. So go to fast loop, start loop, and that's gonna be gen, and we're gonna run that 20 times. Let's add a new comment. We're gonna call this generate. Okay, so on loop gen, <clears throat> we want to, this is gonna be a nestled loop. Uh, on loop gen, we want to start the loop gen x. Gen underscore x, you can call that whatever you want, just so, but you need to name it so that you know what it is. Uh, and that needs to be done the same amount of times because uh, as the, the loop gen, because this is, uh, it's a, the array is a cube, so. All right, so on loop gen, we're starting loop gen x 20 times. Uh, on loop gen x, this is where we're gonna actually generate. So what we're gonna do is set the position of this uh, placer object, we're gonna set the X position to the loop index of gen underscore X times 32. 
okay? Because we need to offset it. Since the index, uh, I'm sorry, since the uh, array is just 20 by 20, um, we can take the spots in the array and then multiply by the size of the tiles and it will place them, essentially it expands it out because the array is one, uh, one tile is taking up one spot. I hope that makes sense. But since the placement, uh, the actual in the world, the size of the blocks is 32 by 32, we need to multiply by 32 or whatever the size of your block is. If you have a 64 by 64 block, you would be multiplying by 64 here. All right, so set the loop in, uh, the position to the loop index of gen x times 32. And what loop index is, is, current, is the current iteration of that loop. So we're gonna do the same thing on the y. So set the position, y coordinate to loop index. And this one is going to be the loop index of gin. So what's happening is gin loads the first time we're on the, uh, the it'll be <clears throat> at the very uh, row, is it row or column? It'll just be at the zero on the Y. And then it'll, it'll create all of these and then it'll drop down and create the next line and the next line and the next line, making our cube. Oh, I, I forgot to multiply this by 32. All right, so that set the position. Now we need to do the same thing for the array. We want to set the position of the array to equal the loop index as well. So change current position. Uh, set the x position to loop index, and that's gen underscore x. And we're going to set the y to loop index <coughs> of gen. <coughs> okay, so we need to get the value written at the x dimension that we have, uh, x and y dimension on the array that we have now moved to. And then we need to change the animation frame of our tile placer to be updated to that value. So we are going to set the animation change, animation frame, and we're gonna grab, we're gonna read the value from current position. We need to make sure the order was right. Some re for some reason, that was in the wrong order. So we need to make sure that we set the dimensions first and then force the animation frame. <clears throat> now, we need to do something else. We're gonna, um, again though, this is on loop gen x. So go to on loop gen underscore x. But we only wanna do this if the animation, so compare the animation uh, frame and make sure it is different than zero. So we only want to do this if it's not zero, which was null. If it's zero, we don't want to paste anything. If it is anything else, we do want to paste anything. So when that when that happens, we need to create the uh, backdrop if it is not zero. Um, that is under animation, paste image in the background as an obstacle, and that should do it. Let's test it and make sure I did not break this. All right, let's put some stuff down. Okay, so one will clear it, doesn't it? No, two clears it, one loads it. There it is, two for clear, one for load. Two for clear, one for load. And as you can see, it works just fine. We can keep adding more stuff to it. We can clear it and it comes right back. We're, we're pulling all that information out of the array and populating the level with the tiles accordingly. Now, what else you can do with an array um, is you can here, I'll show you. We'll do a keyboard upon pressing a key. We'll make it three. Um, you can save array to file. You can save it either just with a, a value or via selector. Um, and then you can load it. And once you load it, then you can generate like we did here. So it's very easy to save and load an array. It's right here under the array. It's just files, load array, or save array. Super duper simple. And you can name it anything you want. I usually call them uh, .ARRs, but you can name them whatever. It's cool. So um, that is how you do it, guys. This is how you make a simple level editor in Click Team Fusion 2.5. Now this just covered how to make backdrops. So in another video, I will show you how to make uh, objects if you need to save more information. Uh, for each object. If you don't, if it's just an object, you can replace the object with a tile. And then here when we generate, you could say if the current frame equals, the, and that is, you know, uh, what the the number that represented the enemy, like five would be an enemy, then you would just create the enemy object at that x, y, instead of actually pasting this. So I hope that made sense. 
ladies and gentlemen. If not, uh, please feel free to write me an email or leave a comment down below, or uh, the best thing to do would be to join my Discord channel, and the link is in the description. <clears throat> so, thank you for watching, and uh, you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next video.